Hello everyone, Ice Cool Tech here. So Apple has just released iOS 15.2 to the general public, and in this video we're going to be taking a look to see if it's worth updating the iPhone SE first generation. Now you have iPhone SE, you care about iPhone SE, and I cover iPhone SE. So you would benefit greatly from tapping the subscribe button and using the bell icon to enable post notifications down below. Alright, so kicking things off, we take a look at the overall performance of iOS 15.2 on the iPhone SE, and I have to say it is slightly better than iOS 15.1, 15.0. Nothing major, it's not going to change your usage, but I thought it would you know, be worth noting. The animation speeds, on the other hand, are really, really smooth. I've had no major stuttering problems or any issues with that. Now this is pretty much the same as iOS 15.0 and 15.1, I would say maybe slightly better in certain areas. Occasionally I would have some stuttering in the control center for example with iOS 15.0. Mostly resolved in 15.1, 15.2 is pretty much just the icing on the cake at this point. Now the RAM management again is the same as the earlier releases of iOS 15, which I really never noticed any change from iOS 14 either, ever since later versions of iOS 14 has kind of been mostly the same. So that's not necessarily a bad thing because I haven't experienced too many problems with RAM management. Before I talk about the battery life of iOS 15.2 on the iPhone SE first generation, I will tell you guys that my max capacity is currently at 87% and my iPhone actually has experienced a shutdown before, but as you can see here, I manually turned off the performance management. Alright, so battery life on the iPhone SE first generation running iOS 15.2 has been the best I've seen it in a very long time. Now, better than a lot of iOS 14 releases and better than every other release of iOS 15 so far, in my experience, it's been really, really good. Now, overnight, I can't really say the same thing. It's on the higher end. I've noticed a drain from anywhere from about 16 to 24%. Now, overheating has also been really good. I've only noticed this device get slightly warm a few times, and that was really just after I updated it. Ever since then, it's been really okay. I haven't had much of a problem with it. So it looks like Apple is working to improve on the overheating situation. Just a friendly heads up, two things. One, the device after updating will undergo a process called indexing. Now in layman's terms, this is just uh, performing a ton of background tasks essentially. Now this will use up extra CPU, it will use up extra battery life, and it may cause slight overheating. This can last up to three days. I haven't really ever seen it go for that long, so I would expect it to take less time, but I would just give the device a few days to get used to the operating system and then determine if you have battery drain or any of that type of stuff. You should be good to go after that, however. The second thing I do want to say is that this isn't a one size fits all. This will vary by user to user. Not only, you know, the battery drain, but also the standby drain, the overheating. Just because I'm having good battery performance does not mean you will and vice versa. All right, so I'm pretty impressed with iOS 15.2. I will say a lot of people are still reporting bugs, which, you know, it's, it's going to take a few more updates for everything to get really ironed out. But for the most part, iOS 15.2 has been really nice in my experience and, you know, all the topics that I've just covered. And I'm impressed. It's pretty impressive, especially the battery life. So should you update? Well, I'm going to say no if you're currently running iOS 14.8.1 or earlier. In that case, I would recommend waiting for a few more iOS 15 releases. Some more bugs can be ironed out, so you'll be going into a more pleasant experience. If you're currently on iOS 15.0 or later, I would totally suggest updating to iOS 15.2 so you can get those extra features as well as the enhancements and bug fixes that iOS 15.2 does bring. Now that is all I have for this video. If you do have any questions or you'd just like to say hi, make sure to leave a comment down below. As always, thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.